Um, hey guys, so today we are going to explain uh, the reading titled Becoming a Marijuana User. So it is a very like shocking title, right? But to put it up front before I start explaining the reading, so it is, this reading is about smoking marijuana and it was published in 1953 or uh, sometime around that, so in the 1950s. So by presenting this reading to you guys as like one of the requ one of the required readings for our course i'm not saying that you guys should go out and try marijuana i'm not advocating marijuana in any sense but i just feel like this is probably the most interesting readings that i have ever encountered in the field of symbolic interaction so although it is not in your textbook it is published on canvas as like a separate article but i still want to share it with you guys and uh, share how howard becker who is the author of this particular paper use the social phenomenon of people smoking marijuana to demonstrate a symbolic interactionist point. So we will be explaining this particular piece uh, today. So first of all, some of the background information about the author, the author Howard Becker, he is an American sociologist and he has published in a variety of topics, including smoking marijuana, including uh, jazz musicians and because he himself is not only a professor but he's also like a musician or at least like a jazz music enthusiastic so uh, enthusiast so this is why he uh, although he's a sociologist he writes on a variety of topics so one of his most popular publication as a book is called art wars so this is really, really, really interesting. I highly recommend you guys to check that out, especially if you're interested in uh, the topic of art in general. So uh, traditionally, when we talk about art and artist, we always regard the production of art as a very lonely job, right? When we talk about artist, we always picture a person painting in his own his or her own studios alone by himself or by herself and we don't uh, have a vision of how an art piece is actually produced so in this book written by Howard Becker titled Art Wars he tries to understand how uh, a art project or a piece of art is being produced not only by the artist himself or herself but also with different parties that involved in the process including like the dealers or the owner of of, uh, uh, of art galleries or uh, there's different parties involved in, pro in producing the definition or in creating the definition of a good art piece. So this is also very symbolic interactionist if you think back to the definition of symbolic interaction, right? So uh, the definition of what a good piece of art is co-produced during the process of interactions based uh, w within different parties that are involved. So this is one of his very famous publication and he also published on jazz mu uh, jazz musicians and how they uh, incorporate different interactional rituals when they perform uh, to different groups of audiences which is also very interesting so this is a little bit background information about the author and something about this particular article as well so this particular article titled Becoming a Marijuana User was published in 1953. So you have to take into consideration the social context uh, of United States in 1950s. So smoking marijuana in the 1950s is, is uh, much more controversial compared to smoking marijuana nowadays, right? So smoking marijuana in the, in the 50s was still being considered as something that is abnormal that is deviant right and by uh, for this particular piece what becker tries to understand is 
how people、uh, create the meaning of getting high. So if you recall, what Smalley Interaction is is trying to do is that they try to understand how people produce a meaning of a piece of social realities differently. So in this case, the social reality that Becker tries to examine is the pleasurable feeling after smoking marijuana. So he tries to understand why,、uh, how do people、uh, create this idea of Pleasure after smoking marijuana. So he's arguing that、uh, getting high does not automatically happen right after you smoke marijuana, but it is a learning process. So by learning process, he means that、uh, smokers has to define the feelings that he or she felt after smoking marijuana as pleasurable as. High. So he tries to examine the social reality of getting high after smoking marijuana, and see how it is a learning process instead of something that happens automatically. So this corresponds with the foundation of symbolic interaction, right? So social reality does not has, uh, internal meanings, but people attach meanings to different pieces of social reality. So I'm going to explain how. Uh, he came up with this kind of finding. So,、uh, in the beginning of this article, the author first talk about why his particular perspective or approach is different from previous studies that examine marijuana smoking. So, he says previously in previous st- studies, the identification of those individual. Psychological traits which differentiates marijuana smokers from non-users, marijuana users from non-users, and which are assumed to account for the use of the drug. So previously, when people study marijuana smoking, they are trying to find some unique psychological traits that differentiates between smoker versus non-smoker. But Becker is saying that there is no essential or internal difference between smoker and non-smoker because smoking marijuana or、uh, getting high after smoking marijuana is a learned process. So smokers does not have internal psychological differences、uh, compared to non-smokers. So Becker's premise、uh, premise for this particular study is that he says the presence of a given kind of behavior is the result of a sequence of social experiences, during which the person acquires a conception of the meanings of the behavior, and the perceptions and judgments of objects and situations, all of which make the activity possible and desirable. So what he's trying to say is that. There is no essential difference between smoker and non-smoker because smoking marijuana is a learning process. Smokers has to learn, so there is no essential difference between、uh, smokers and non-smokers. And to accomplish his goal in this particular study,、uh, the method he used is interview. So he interviewed. Fifty. Uh, he had fifty interviews with marijuana smokers, and he tries to understand the sequence of changes in attitudes and experiences, which leads to the use of marijuana.、Uh, leads to the use of marijuana for pleasure. So he, in order to acquire data for his study, he did fifty interviews with marijuana smokers, and that includes more experienced. Marijuana smokers and more novice marijuana smokers. So,、uh, so in presenting his findings, he kind of present his findings as steps for constructing the reality of feeling high. So he's presenting his findings by showing、uh, the readers like the different steps a novice m- marijuana smoker has to go through in order to learn. To get high, in order to learn the feeling of getting high after smoking marijuana, so the first step that he identified after、uh, interviewing fifty marijuana smoker is、um, 
if you want to get high, you have to smoke marijuana properly. So you have to have the proper technique in order to get high. So getting high does not automatically happen right after you smoke marijuana, but you have to learn to get high. And the first step is to have the right technique and to learn to smoke marijuana properly. So he says, the first step in the sequence of if, uh, events that must occur if the person is to become a user is that he must learn to use the proper smoking technique in order that his use of the drug will produce some effects in terms of which his conception of of it can change. So in order to change your conceptions of what getting high means the first step is that you have to smoke marijuana properly. So some of the interview quotes that supports his first findings that uh, one person says, the trouble with people like this is that they are just not smoking it right. That's all there is to it. So this person is, is claiming that if you are not feeling high, if you are not able to get high, this is because you are not smoking marijuana properly and another person says no don't do it like that he said suck it you know draw in and hold it in your lungs till you feel for a period of time so he's trying to uh, teach a more novice uh, marijuana smoker how to smoke marijuana properly so in order to get high you first have to uh, use the proper technique and the second step he identified after uh, interviewing those marijuana smokers is that you also have to learn to interpret whatever feelings you have after sm uh, smoking marijuana as pleasurable. So there is no universal definition of what pleasure means or what getting high means. So in order to... Um, feel high you have to learn to interpret the feelings after smoking marijuana as a sign as a sign of getting high so becker says the user must be able to point them out to himself and consciously consciously connect them with his having smoked marijuana before he can have this experience Otherwise, regardless of the actual effects produced, he considered that the drug ha uh, has had no effect on him. And he also says, that is for the use to continue, it is necessary not only to use the drug so, so as to produce effects, but also to learn to perceive these effects when they occur. In this way, marijuana acquires meaning for the user as an object which can be used for pleasure. So uh, apart from smoking it properly, another step that you have to go through in order to perceive this particular piece of social reality as getting high is to define, is trying to subjectively interpret the feelings after you smoke marijuana and define it as high. So there's no definition about what getting high means after smoking marijuana but you have to learn to interpret the feelings after smoking as pleasurable so some of the quotes that supports this finding is that one person says like i asked him for some of the symptoms or something how would i know you know so he told me to sit on a stool i sat on i think i sat on a bar stool and he said let your feet hang. And then when I got down, my feet were real, uh, were real cold, you know, and I started feeling it, you know, that was the first time. So when this person is trying to define or trying to interpret or trying to tell the interviewer uh, who's backer what, what high means, he's trying to describe the process of a person teaching him how to get high. So he's not describing a concrete feeling but he's describing how he learned how this person learned to interpret the feeling as high so and another says the novice then eager to have this feeling picks up from other users some concrete reference uh, reference of the term high and apply these notions to his own experiences and 
uh, some some people also says it is only when he can do this that he is high, and uh, another person says I was happy I guess you know what I mean but I didn't really know I was high you know what I mean, it was only after the second time that I got high, high that I realized I was high the first time so there's no universal definition of this piece of social reality which in this case is getting high or feeling pleasurable after smoking marijuana but different smokers has to use different techniques to interpret to redefine what that whatever they felt after smoking marijuana as pleasurable as high and the last step is that if you want to commit to smoking marijuana I become a long-term user of this drug, you have to constantly redefine the sensation as pleasurable. Otherwise, you will not be able to commit to using this drug. So Becker says he must learn to enjoy the effects uh, uh, he has just learned to experience. Marijuana produced sensations are not automatically or necessarily pleasurable. The taste for such experience is a socially acquired one, not different in kind from acquired taste for oysters or dry martinis. So Becker is trying to say that if you want to commit to smoking marijuana, you have to constantly do this redefinition of uh, your sensations. And he's also saying that marijuana smokers does not have psychological difference between non-smokers so they should not be labeled as people who are for example mentally ill or abnormal but it is similar to the acquired taste like the taste for oysters or dry martinis so people learn to appreciate this feeling people learn to like eating oysters and drinking dry martinis the same way as people learn to enjoy uh, smoking marijuana. So um, some of the quotes uh, to support this last finding, last step is that uh, he teaches him to regard those ambiguous experiences formally defined as unpleasant, as enjoyable. So one person has to intentionally define previous ambiguous experiences as enjoyable in order to commit to, uh, to smoking marijuana. And uh, what was once frightening and distasteful becomes after a taste for it, uh, for it is built up pleasant desire and sought after. So in order to uh, commit to smoking marijuana, you have to constantly redefine your previous experiences as high. So basically what Becker is trying to say is that uh, the definition there's no universal definition that can uh, of being high or feeling pleasurable after smoking marijuana marijuana that can automatically be applied to every single smoker but smoker has to define and interpret their experiences as high so this corresponds with the foundation of symbolic interaction right so there is no essential or internal meanings for uh, any piece of social reality, but people attach different meanings to different pieces of social reality. So the conclusion that he draws from this particular study is that he says, uh, learning to smoke marijuana in the proper ways and perceive whatever people feel after smoking as pleasurable happens in a series of communicative acts in which others point out new aspects of his experiences to him, present him with new interpretations of events, and help him e achieve a new conceptual orga organization of his world without which the new behavior is not possible. So the social reality of feeling high after smoking marijuana does not just happen automatically, but need to be learned and acquired. So this is what Becker is trying to say here. He's trying to use a symbolic interactionist lens to study a piece of social reality. In this case is 
getting high after smoking marijuana. And to give you guys some other examples, Becker has already mentioned uh, the acquired taste of oysters and dry martinis, right? So if you think about your previous experiences, drinking coffee. So do you like drinking coffee the first time that you drank coffee? Because objectively, it is bitter, right? It is not like a good taste of like a syrup or sodas, right? So objectively, it is a bitter taste but gradually we learn to like drinking coffee because similar to how novic marijuana smokers learn to feel high after smoking marijuana we learn to like coffee we learn to enjoy this bitter taste of coffee same as beer beer right so when we well, the first time when we drink beer it is also a very bitter taste but gradually we learn to enjoy drinking beer uh, uh, or we learn to appreciate the taste of bitterness bitterness in order to acquire uh, the taste of enjoying drinking a glass of beer right uh, and this also applies to uh, the study of fashion so what is being considered as fashionable is not universally agreed upon right so i don't know if you guys know this particular pair of sneakers it is extremely expensive i feel like it's like a thousand bucks per pair so uh it's from Bal balenciaga so this balenciaga daddy sneakers the time when it came out i feel like many people are saying that it is so ugly why are people spending a thousand dollars on this type of huge sneakers that doesn't look good but gradually after fashion bloggers started to wear this pair of sneakers or fashion magazines started to promote this pair of sneakers or like youtubers um, uh, models on instagram started to wear this more often we started to like redefine whether this pair of sneakers is really ugly or extremely fashionable right so the idea of fashion trends what we consider as fashionable is really similar to uh, Becker's definition Becker's approach to smoking marijuana it is not it does not happen automatically so we do not automatically think that that this pair of sneaker is fashionable but we have to redefine our previous interpretations after interacting with youtubers interacting with models interacting with our friends so this is how symbolic meanings are being created sustained and reproduced during interactions so hopefully this can provide you guys with a an idea about what symbolic interactionist is